You know what they say about assumptions. It makes an out of you and me. But there's one time when an assumption makes you look like a genius. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, Brooke the Broker here. I wanted to put a video together to talk about the latest and greatest craze that's been around for decades. You just haven't heard about it because it hasn't been necessary for us to use this. And it is called a loan assumption, okay? So the loan assumption in a nutshell is this. I am selling my house. I have a VA loan on my house. My VA loan, I still have a balance of about $200,000 and my payment on my loan is $1,000 a month and I still have X number of years left paying my mortgage. You are a veteran, you wanna buy my house and you wanna buy my house for 300,000. So instead of you getting a new VA loan at 6% interest for $300,000, you can just take over my loan at the 2.75% and that's for that $200,000 section. And then you take out another loan for the extra $100,000. And the combination of the two is probably pretty close to what your payment is gonna be if you take out a new loan. But here's the difference. The first loan, that $200,000 loan you're just taking over for me, I only have 10 years left on that. So in 10 years, you're doing that $1,000 payment for 10 years. And then you don't have that at all. It's paid off and you're just paying on the second mortgage. It is amazing. It is an amazing thing that's out there. So this video is all about it. So this video is for buyers, it is for sellers, and it is for real estate agents. So let me give you a little nitty gritty about loan assumptions. There are only three types of loans that can be assumed, okay? The first one is a VA loan an FHA loan or a USDA loan. All three of these loans are government-backed loans. Those are the only loans that are assumable. So I'm sorry if you are a seller and you have a conventional loan, this is not gonna work for you, okay? But the beauty of this, other than USDA, is anyone can assume these loans. So USDA, the stipulation there is the property has to obviously be in a USDA zoned area. Um, and so if there's already a USDA loan on it, it's going to uh, be able to be assumed. But unfortunately, if the boundary lines have changed since that loan was taken out and it is not possible to qualify anymore, that's the stipulation on the USDA loan. But going back to the fact that anyone can assume these loans. So if you are a buyer, you can assume a VA loan, you can assume the FHA loan, and you can assume the USDA loan. You do not have to be a veteran to assume a VA loan, but there are some costs to the seller, not necessarily monetary costs, but there are some um, disadvantages to the seller if that is done. Uh, but in my area, Fredericksburg, Virginia, we have five military bases, guys. We have a ton of retired veterans. I am a veteran myself. We have a lot of VA loans that are out there and a lot of veteran buyers. So if a veteran buyer is buying your home and assuming your VA loan, then it is nice and easy peasy squeezy for you as a seller. So how do you know if your loan is assumable? So this is for our sellers. The way you know your loan is assumable is number one, it needs to be one of the three, the FHA, the VA, or the USDA. Then the next thing you need to do, and I'm looking at my notes right here, you need to go to your truth and lending papers from either when you purchased your home or the last time you refinanced your home, whichever was the most recent transaction. You need to go back to those closing papers, look at the papers you signed for your loan and find the truth in lending documentation. And in that paperwork, there will be a checkbox. Is this loan assumable? Yes, it is assumable. So make sure you see that. So just because it's one of these three, let's not assume 
that the loan is assumable until we have that clear documentation that yes, this loan is assumable and it is in your truth in lending paperwork or TIL is what it could also be listed as. So what is the process? So the first process for a seller, if you are thinking about putting your home on the market and getting in leg up on your competition by offering your home with the opportunity for a buyer to assume your loan, the first thing you need to do is you need to call the bank or the loan servicing company that you send your monthly payments to. And you need to tell them, hey, I'm looking at selling my home and I want to start the process so that a future buyer can assume my loan with you on the house. Now, let me tell you this word of warning, guys. These lending institutions have not received a phone call like this in practically 30 years. OK, so I'll tell you this. All the people working there, they were not working there 30 years ago. So they've never probably even heard of this before. So until this becomes mainstream, put your patient pants on when you get that phone call. Make sure you have some time because you're gonna be passed from person to person to person to person. And you're probably gonna to be told it's not possible or you can't do that or this and that. I'll tell you this guys, it is possible. It is not up to the bank to decide if this can be done. It is the federal government that says, yes, it can be done, okay? But they don't know anything about this. So it's gonna take a little bit of time until this becomes more mainstream. So the first people who are doing this, put your patient pants on, just make sure you have some time allotted and you take notes of who you're speaking to throughout the entire process. But as a seller, start that early, simply because that's gonna add weeks to the timeline and you don't wanna have a buyer on the line and that's when you're starting the process. So as a seller, if you could do it early, that's great. Now let's say we are already in a, we have a contract on a house and the buyer is interested in assuming the loan. At that point, the buyer needs to call the seller's lending institution and start the process. The buyer also needs to be working with their loan officer. So their loan officer that they got pre-qualified with, doesn't matter what bank they came from, what institution they came from, a good loan officer is gonna help that buyer through this process. Even though the buyer might be assuming a loan at another company, that loan officer could also give that buyer the loan that bridges the gap between what is owed on the assumed loan and what the purchase price is. And it's important for that lender to stay involved. So guys, we have great lenders on our team. If you want a referral to a great lender to help you through this process, let us know. The great lenders are customer service oriented and they will take very good care of you. So if you have a lender that is refusing to help you through this process, come on guys, get with me. We'll make sure you're hooked up with a good person to help. So some questions that people may have is, well, if the loan is only for 200,000, and I am buying it for 300,000, how do I come up with the $100,000 difference? Well, one answer is just what I shared. You get a loan that bridges the gap, an equity loan or a second mortgage um, or a hard money loan. You can go to an independent uh, lender who could do that. You could also bridge the gap with cash or you can do a combination of the two. Uh, the big thing is you as a borrower, not only do you need to qualify obviously for assuming the loan, you need to qualify for the full package, okay? So you need to qualify financially to be able to pick up the exact payments that that first loan is having and the payments on your uh, second loan and make sure you are still qualified for all that. So in this transition, depending on how much equity the seller has in the house, um, sometimes it might not make sense for a buyer to do this, but if there's very little equity in the home, in other words, the seller bought the house just a couple years ago and there's not that much equity in the house, this is an amazing opportunity for you guys. I mean, you can have a loan at 2.25% and the seller's already been paying the mortgage, so you have fewer years to pay it off, which is incredible. Um, can these be refinanced in the future? Absolutely, absolutely. If rates go down to a point where it makes sense for you to refinance and put both of those loans together in a whole new thing, you can absolutely do that. So you can refinance down the line. Okay, so how long does it take? This is another question. Well, the FHA has a rule that the decision has to be made 
has to be made and it has to be reviewed in 45 days, within 45 days. So right now I've heard people say, oh, it's gonna take 60 to 90 days. Well, the FHA says it has to be done in 45 days, guys, okay? Um, and when it becomes more mainstream and these lending institutions create departments that will be able to help them with this, uh, the timeline should be pretty short. You know how long it took for you to qualify for a loan uh, for your lender letter, right? It took like a 15 minute phone call, faxing a couple documents and you had a lender letter in a day. Come on, it doesn't take 45 days to do this. Uh, so the timeline will shorten up, but I will say at first it's gonna be a little bit longer. Is an appraisal required? Um, it is not required on the assumed loan, but for the second trust, the lender might want to have an appraisal done just to make sure um, everything is kosher with that. Um, for the VA and FHA, sometimes on the assumed loans, uh, depending on how old the loan is, they may want to do an appraisal simply because they want to look at the condition of the property. So if they're going to continue to warrant this property, warrant this mortgage, they want to make sure that the condition is good uh, because if you foreclose, I mean, they end up with the house. Uh, so they may do it to check the condition, but more than likely they're not going to do that. Um, also to assume a loan, the buyer must be, uh, they must be planning on living in the home, okay? So an investor who wants to buy a rental property, they can't go and assume loans. Uh, for these loans, you have to be an owner occupant in order for this to happen. So if you're interested in learning more about this as a seller or as a buyer or as an agent, what I would love for you to do is in the comment section below, write your questions. And then in a couple weeks, I'll come back and I'll do answers to frequently asked questions on loan assumptions, and I will give you all the answers that I can find. This is an amazing product. It's been around for decades. We just haven't used it in 25 to 30 years. And I've only been in this business 19 years, guys. I've never done it before, and I am so eager to get going on it. I literally have all of the VA forms and all the HUD forms ready to go. So if you're interested in learning more about it, please reach out. Now, how do I find houses as a buyer? How do I find houses that I can assume a loan on? Well, eventually when this becomes more mainstream, we'll be able to search for this in the MLS, but until it becomes more mainstream, it's just gonna take a lot of extra homework on behalf of your buyer agent. So when you send them a list of properties you're interested in and you wanna assume a loan, the buyer agent will look at those properties, but they have to dig into the history of every single one of them individually to figure out what uh, the current mortgage is on the home. And that's just gonna take a little bit more time. But in our current market, it's okay. We're not operating in seconds and minutes right now. It's more like days and weeks, it's okay. Uh, so as a buyer, I'm sorry, you can't search for this right now, uh, but eventually, hopefully you will be able to. So put your questions in the chat box below. I will do another video answering your questions later on, but this is an amazing product. It is an amazing opportunity for buyers. And yes, you can buy a house with a 2.75% fixed rate, interest rates, and you are going to be the envy of all of your friends who could not do that. So please ask your questions and I will get back to you with the answers. See ya.